Today I'm going to show you how I diagnose and repair my 310A backhoe that won't start. If this video helps you, please help me by clicking the subscribe button. This is a John Deere 310A backhoe and let me show you what it does. When I try to start it, let's key on, I've got nothing happening. Now sometimes I will also uh, get a clicking solenoid and actually a couple times I've sat here and fiddled with it long enough and it's just all of a sudden started. But uh, for the most part, I hit the button and nothing happens. Got my trusty little multimeter out. This is a fairly cheap one that I bought on Amazon and I'm going to post a link to where you could buy it as well in case you need one. Now to Anytime I have something that won't start, and particularly if it just clicks or doesn't uh, click at all, first thing I want to do is just check to make sure that I have a charged battery. So I've got this set to VDC, and look at that, over 12 volts, so this is charged. Since I know I'm getting power, the next thing I'm going to do is check power at the solenoid on the starter. I've got an old starter solenoid sitting right here. Uh, I'm going to put my positive lead here on the S terminal and then I'm going to put my ground there on the ground. And, uh, connect to the ground, I can just hit right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sit that right up there where I can see it. Got the power on. Let's see if we get any power down there. I'm hitting the button, and I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you can hear that starter solenoid start to hit there. But yeah, I am not getting 12 volts to that starter solenoid getting all kinds of erratic readings actually if you did get power to a starter solenoid and nothing happened that would mean that it's now time to replace your starter solenoid now in my case i'm now going to move the red positive cable over to my battery connection which is this top one right here now I just connect that over to the battery terminal and there we go we have 12 volts so we are getting powered directly from the battery if I did not get power to the starter from the battery I would clean up the connections on both sides of this battery cable and if that didn't help it then I would replace this battery cable now I'm on the back side of this starter switch. I've got my black connected to a ground, and then one side of the starter switch should have constant power, which that does. The other side does not, but it should when we just depress the button. So I'm gonna hold this on the other side of the switch and hit the button. And there we go, we see 11 volts go through that button. So we're getting some power through that switch. And as long as I see 9 to 12 volts, I'm happy with it. If neither of the connections on the back side of the switch had power, uh, then I would be looking at the wiring between the key terminal to the switch. If only if only one side had power and when I hit the button, I didn't get power to the other side of the switch, then I would be replacing the key switch. Now it's time to look at the neutral start safety switch. Mine is located on the top of the transmission underneath the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this connector off. It should just pull back. And we're gonna start by testing the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and just connect my black over here to the battery ground and then I'm going to connect to each terminal okay so I have this connected to the 
first side of the switch. And I hit the starter button and I've got nothing. So maybe I have this backwards. Let's try the other side of the switch. So I'm just moving that over to the other side of the switch. Hit the starter button and I've got nothing. So that means that I have no voltage coming into this switch, which tells me I have a problem with the wiring somewhere between this neutral safety switch and the starter switch. Now, if I had seen the correct amount of voltage come in when I hit that starter button, I would have then attempted to reconnect to this and test it across to this other terminal. And so if I'd had voltage only on one side then, and it didn't uh, transfer across the switch to the other side while in neutral, then that would have told me that I have a defective neutral safety switch or a misadjusted neutral safety switch, and I would have needed to adjust that. And actually, you can test the switch without hooking it back up by checking for continuity across it. So I've got this set to, to, deep, to beep anytime there is continuity. Hear that? And so I'll put this on one side of the switch, put another one on the other. While this thing's in neutral, I should have continuity. And I do, which tells me that my switch is good and that I don't need to uh, adjust it. But if you didn't have continuity across that while your tractor was in neutral, then that would indicate that you either have a misadjusted neutral safety switch or you would have a bad switch and need to replace it. So now I have some wiring to look at. I just pulled this out and I think the first thing I should probably do is check these crimp connectors and uh, maybe take back this electrical tape that someone put on here and see what I have behind there. So I took off that crimp connector that connected to, to this and went ahead and just hooked up directly to there. And now I have my 12 volts on the one side. So that should take care of my problem. Just gotta rewire it back up. Got this thing all wired back up, and let's start it up, make sure she runs now. All fixed. I hope this video helped you. If it did, would you mind helping me by clicking the subscribe button? We are a family of six living our best life on 90 acres in the Washtenaw Mountains of Arkansas. And every time someone hits that subscribe button, it helps grow our channel. We appreciate you.